it me reporting whatever the fuck I want. You don't owe me how you know whatever. Me. You should be scared. It's tea time. Hello and welcome to Tea Time with Sarah Holcomb, where I, Sarah Holcomb, and fellow comedians spill the tea on news stories that have been going down this past week while having a tea party at the same time. Today we have Vic Pandya. He's a nationally touring headliner and his comedy album debuted number one on iTunes. And Chris Davis. He is an actor, writer, storyteller, and Chicago-based comedian. Let's get into the tea. BBC is reporting that the family members of September 11th victims were telling Biden do not come to the memorial for the 20th anniversary of September 11th unless you declassify the documents. They want to know who was involved with September 11th and what really happened. 1,800 people signed this letter calling him to release the documents. They believe it implicates officials from Saudi Arabia in the plot. There was a lawsuit filed which questioned former Saudi Arabian officials under oath and the disposition is sealed. Why is it sealed? What did they say? He was unwelcome at the ceremony. We're never gonna know, you know? There's so many things like that. If we might find out in like 50 years, but then it's like, we're gonna have 40 other things that are that level. Mm -hmm. you know? And it also all the repercussions already happened from that. Like, we got into a war. We're still in that war. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. 20 years later, where this is war the ever. longest war ever. After they, let's just say he classifies, and they figure out what, what then what? You know, like, yeah. like what box are they trying to open up? Signing these petitions, are they like, Trump, Trump voters or like... Apparently they were the family members of the victims uh, okay. of September 1,800 people you said, right? Yeah. I do remember that. I mean, like, a lot of people in the September 11th attacks that were victims of it weren't even from New York. Um, they mm -hmm. were um, commuters that would go to New York City for work. So I actually lived in Washington, D.C. at that time. My dad was at the Pentagon on September 11th, but he had just like left to teach a uh, class at Georgetown and then he he completely missed the attack. So oh. yeah, but we were freaking out because phone lines were down. They didn't have cell phones at the time. There was no How such thing. Was. Yeah, they, that's crazy. Um, yeah, so all the phone lines were down. Nobody could like, when you pick up the phone and you try to dial anything, it would just not ring. There was like no was sound. A couple people at my school's parents died in that. So, um, I mean, it did really affect a lot of people. I mean, you think about how many, how big those buildings were. Like, you think about like the Sears Tower in Chicago, like how many people work and like it's insane the, how far reaching that can be. Mm -hmm. um, what strong case for work from home, man. Terrorist yeah. attacks, dude. <laughs> COVID and terrorist attacks. Okay? Can't find us if we're in yeah, our house. Okay. That's why, do you know how, like, it's obviously no, you don't want to die from COVID or from a terrorist attack, but like dying at your job is like the worst way to go. Oh my God. Like that is, <laughs> die doing something cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like not being an accountant. You right, know, that's just... terrible. <laughs> and not gonna release it. Never. I'm not surprised. Especially if Saudi Arabia is involved. Fuck. Saudi Arabia, I, okay, so I have a theory. I think that Saudi Arabia is a lot more involved in this country than we even think oh. because of I the- I think that's like people are, it's like, Broadly acknowledged. Yeah. Well, I'm even looking at the female side. As females, we feel a lot of the pressure of the purity culture and so on. But why do we have purity culture in America? That's so weird. In Europe, they don't have that. They're not as involved with the Saudi Arabian family or the, yeah. the government. So they're more free. But America is known to be free, but we have this crazy amount of purity culture and so much pressure and ooh, so-and-so had sex with so-and-so, oh my God, and they freak out. And it's like, is this Saudi Arabia? Like, why is this a big deal? So purity I think- Purity culture, just explain yeah. for people there and me uh, what, <laughs> what that means. Yeah. Purity culture <laughs> is like when they, um, virginity is praised. Um, and if you are not um, having sex with people, that is praised and, and so on. And it's completely up to the individual, I mean, some people don't want to go around and do that, but some people, that's the way they want to live their life and that should be fine. But why is it that it's praised so much here? Why, when we post pictures of celebrity or whoever wearing a bathing suit, it's like super hyper-sexualized, whereas yeah. when you go to Europe, they're on nude beaches and not even looking yeah. at each other. Yeah, it's weird, like you're right, that's a good point. When we have uh, anything like that here, it's, it's like a, it's, that's the main focus mm -hmm. versus that's just like 
oh, they're just on a new beach. Like, you don't even give it a second thought. You're like, that's just Europe. Yeah. Europe, though, is so much more comfortable and open with their sexuality. And mm-hmm. like, that's been the case for years, you know? Like, here, when something sexual, like, we focus on the sexual thing only. We don't focus mm-hmm. on the other stuff. But people in Europe are just way more open. I do think that it's because of um, there being, like, a soft white underbelly of the Saudi Arabian um, influence on America. I really do. I think yeah. it goes down even to that level. It's insidious. And then there's an artist in Dundee, Scotland, named Sion Parkinson, who is preserving sounds from work environments so that factories, laboratories, and offices. The idea is that people in the future will hear these noises in museums and will be able to just know what it sounds like. What it sounds like to work in a That building. is wild. That's uh, that feels like selfish because his name is Parkinson, so maybe he forgot. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> we're, good. we're canceled. We're canceled now. Um, okay, what up? I don't think, though, in 50 years you're going to forget. I mean, we're still going to have, I don't know if office buildings will exist, but I imagine still people want to go in and like interact in some capacity. There is still certain jobs that you're required to be, like, you need to be in person together. So while like, this is a cool, I think it's important, it's just like, it's not fully going away. I don't see it going away I, until we make huge strides in like technology and things like that. But I mean, it has only been a hundred years since uh, the first car was made. Oh, in like 50, you're right. What, what could be happening then? Yeah. Right. Whenever I see like pictures of like even old, like I have old pictures on the wall from like, you know, the 1800s and stuff. It's like they don't realize what is so cool about what is going on around them until 100, 140 years later. We're like, dang, there's horses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Picture the exhibit in the museum and they're like walking through a, an office and like, this is Steve, he works in HR. And he's like, he's just like, it's like a model. And like, <laughs> his noises or whatever. Oh like, my God. That's <laughs> how are they gonna, how are they gonna like, showcase that right you can, yeah like, like they're like oh office environment like meeting and it's like you play a button and it just plays like a <laughs> fake meeting <laughs> the question i want to know is like are they going to get all the tea that people used to have at the water fountain right gossip yeah, yeah. All the, yeah. The car, they're going to catch all that racist shit that people <laughs> but like so he says offices like construction like i want to know about like advertising agencies oh like, my you know, stuff that's like that was like really hard for like black folks to get into like I want to hear the conversation you want to hear the mad men I want to hear the mad men stuff oh dang that's what we need some people's entire life and their entire existence was their identity at work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now they got to find hobbies I think that's what the pandemic did to a lot of people yeah like I wasn't able to go in the office and they're like who who am I yeah a lot of people I know are like I spend time my family I hate these people (laughs) I have to steal my own lunch (laughs) Go to the refrigerator, gotta make yeah. shit for myself. Can't, can't bang my assistant anymore. Oh dude. my. Like, <laughs> shit sucks. Yeah, <laughs> darn. <laughs> so, uh, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo <laughs> is again in the news. <laughs> this guy can't stay out of it, man. He is, he is, uh, yeah, he's got all the clout, I guess, but not good clout. He is in the news again for his sexual harassment allegations. And the apparently they interviewed over 180 people like that he's worked with and that he's like affiliated with and like multiple people have testified so he was convicted like he's been I think there's a federal and a a local investigation so he's been it's like been proven and so to defend himself he's been he's been denying it the whole time he held a press conference where he showed a PowerPoint presentation of just examples of him being like intimate with people not like it wasn't like a porn reel but it was like him like hugging someone or like putting his shoulder you know like touching people so i'm like this man's defense was like look i do this all the time <laughs> like that's what his defense was he's like, it's like look this is kind of my thing like, I, and he even said he's like look i he's like black white old young get them all straight i like like them all dude yeah they <laughs> all get it yeah they can all get oh this oh my god i thought that was so insane <laughs> Well, and he's not going to resign. He's not resigning. What exactly are the allegations that they're saying? Like, are there any quotes from? I mean, I haven't. Yeah, I think there's some pretty specific. Like, he's people have said he's he's touched me inappropriately. Um, he's made sexual advances towards me. So he's saying though, he's like, no, I just like you know, I touch people on the shoulder. I like give them a kiss on the face, or whatever. <laughs> but people are like, no, it was like clearly inappropriate. Like, mm. I didn't want it. But he was like, no, yes, I'm, I'm going to give this to you. So He groped people. He groped me, yeah. Mm. And I, I mean, that's just, after that many, like 180. It's, yeah. 
Yeah, you. it's definitely you. You, you did it. You did it. Yeah, yeah. His defense is interesting, though. Like, that's just... <laughs> here's all the creepy shit that I've done. Yeah. If you look at it, it could be worse. This is... At least on my eyes. Oh, God. That's imagine like... That, <laughs> imagine that poor, like... Classic intern, narcissist. That poor intern who had to make that PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's like, hey, Andrew, you got any photos of you hugging this old woman? Like, I need it for the... This is going to be hot. We got to put it right here. I got I got a theory. I don't know if it's too hot for this. For this, this, this tea. Bring, bring all the tea. tea. But yeah. I got a theory. I just feel like uh, black folks get canceled. Like... I'm thinking of like R. Kelly and like mm -hmm. Bill Cosby. Like they done. They're not coming back. Well, those two examples. You can survive. You can survive. <laughs> those are extreme. Those are pretty bad. Yeah. Those are extreme. But you can survive, you know, depending on how much privilege you got. That's, that's what I'm thinking. That's true. Uh, yeah. There's a piece of wedding cake from Pr Princess Diana's wedding that's up for auction. And right now it's going for at least $400. The starting rate, right? The starting, yeah, the starting yeah. rate. Yeah. I could imagine that being in like a museum, like in a, in a freezer, just like clear freezer in the future. Because think about like Marie Antoinette or some sort of royalty from history and their wedding cake. That would be so amazing to see like 300 years in the future. It's also, I know people who like they freeze their, you know, their wedding cake or whatever. How do they... So they specifically froze. <clears throat> Got choked up. I really no. My mom was like a huge Princess Diana fan, um, she which was is awesome. interesting because my parents aren't like they don't follow like celebrities really or mm -hmm. anything. But for some reason that one like that one hit a lot of people. Mm -hmm. you know? It's funny y'all y'all talking about this story. Like I'm thinking somebody's about to eat this cake. Yeah, I, don't think, <laughs> I think you got some foodie. Who's living yeah. in his mom's basement? Yeah, Man, I gotta, I gotta have that cake. Man. Yeah, they advised, it, yeah, they advised against not eating it, but I mean, I'm sure it's still edible. Just to say you've had a piece. We've all eaten a lot worse, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's like, yeah, if you're a fan of the, the family and you want, you know, the history, it is cool to be like, see that cake over there? It's not no intimate cake. It's very niche. It's a very you know, yeah. niche flex. Yeah, it's yeah. a very niche flex. Like, you'd have to slide it into every conversation you're in. Yeah. You're like at a dinner and like you want dessert, you're like, actually, I I just bought a Prince Diana's cake. Like, <laughs> um, I got the best dessert. 400 bucks in the start, I'm guaranteed that's gonna go for a million at least. Oh yeah. Sad to see like the wedding cake and know what happened to that marriage and the yeah. subsequent deaths. Yeah. In Democracy Now!, which is a website that I was only aware of today, there's a study that warns the Atlantic Ocean current could collapse and has already significantly destabilized, which means that if this continues, which it will, there's really no way to stop it, it would drastically lower the temperatures in Europe because none of the warm water is being driven up towards Europe anymore from the tropics. and then it'll dramatically raise sea levels across the eastern border of the U.S., which means most of Florida will be done, and all of the east coast cities will be done as well. So obviously New York City is going to be underwater. That's something that they've anticipated for a while, but it's going to happen pretty soon. So if we can find a way to lose Florida but keep New York, yeah, <laughs> I would do that. I'd yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That for sure. <laughs> I used to live in Florida. It was not a good time. We need to put Elon Musk on this. Yeah, right? I'm surprised he hasn't he hasn't he hasn't studied. gotten to this. Yeah. Yo, Elon, bro, <laughs> your name all over this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop trying to go to the moon, dude. Yeah. Do some shit here. Yeah. We okay. I don't know if you guys have seen on Netflix. There is this new UFO series that came out that is like. Oh, I just saw that. I haven't watched it, but I, I saw it on the queue. I saw the whole thing. Good. Yes, it is crazy because these people are not just like psychos that are sitting in their basement talking mm -hmm. about aliens. These people actually worked in the governmental systems and like at Area 51 and have serious cred in in the US government system and they're all saying that they've seen very specific things explaining what they've seen autopsies they've seen and that the aliens have told them through like nonverbal communication that they are simply just trying to stop us from nuclear disaster no. really yes okay so maybe let's hold off on the nuclear reactor. yeah so the aliens are trying to be like they just don't want us to ruin 
the Earth, basically. Yeah, well, what I guess the aliens have said to these people is that if we mess with our planet and destroy our planet, it actually reverberates throughout the universe and will affect them too. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know, I mean, obviously I think they, they put out documents saying that UFOs exist mm -hmm. in the pandemic, right? Yeah. But no one cared. Yeah, and, we all knew already. Yeah, we all knew, but this is interesting because I didn't know that there was communication between mm -hmm. aliens and, and people like in reputable positions. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, and then these people that have been, they also like took ex excerpts from people that were just like on farms that had been taken as well. And these people are not, are saying the exact same things that, and I, are the aliens just out there just trying to tell everybody? Cause they're like <laughs> abducting like kids who are saying these things. There was one thing um, that it was talking about kids in like Africa that were in a schoolyard, like were just went up to the creatures and then came back to the teachers and were like, they said that we're going to kill ourselves with nuclear weapons. Are. Teachers are like, what? Like, these kids yeah. didn't know anything about that. So they're just, like, abducting people and telling everybody, like, stop it. So that was the tea with Vic Pandya and Chris Davis. Thank you so much for joining us. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you back here next time. Bye.